to season one of the Animal Highlight. This first season of the Animal Highlight focuses in on animals in relation to the urban and has been extracted from season three of the Animal Turn podcast. In this episode, we focus in on ants. In today's Animal Highlight, it seems only fitting that we focus in on insects. From talking about bugs burrowing through walls and plotting escape routes, it seems rather strange that we haven't yet had an animal highlight that's looked at insects, because surely insects are the most ubiquitous members of our urban societies. And today I want to focus in on ants in particular for two reasons. One, I think ants to some extent challenge our ideas of what urbanization is. In many ways, I think the season so far has tended to focus on human definitions of the urban and urbanization. We've looked at urban structures as humans have created them. And I don't even know how to define the urban or urbanization without somehow placing the human or human populations or human mobility at the center of what we're thinking about. And I think ants help us to challenge that. Ants help us to think through what urbanization could mean for other animals and in other spaces. But two, I also like the focus on ants because ants are incredible designers. And we've just spent the last hour talking about design. And if you want an animal that really knows how to design and structure a society, they are ants. And I had remembered watching a documentary years ago where the, you know, the hosts of the show had called it a megapolis, a subterranean city. Everything looks like it has been designed by an architect, a single mind. But of course, that isn't true. This colossal and complex city was created by the collective will of the ant colony, the super organism. I went and I found the video again and I've put it in on our YouTube channel under season three animal highlights and watching it again just blew my mind again and again and again. So what these researchers did is they, they found an ant heap in Brazil that had been abandoned by leaf, by leaf cutter ant colony and they poured 10 tons of concrete down the hole, 10 tons. They let the concrete set and then they dug it up. You know, they, they used their brushes and their chisels and they dug it up to see like what does an ant structure look like? And it's huge. It takes weeks to uncover the secret megalopolis of the ants. The size of the structure is awe-inspiring, and it has everything from fungus gardens to rubbish pits, tunnels to ensure good ventilation, and a variety of transport routes. There are subterranean highways connecting the main chambers, and off the main routes are side roads. The paths branch and lead to many fungus gardens and rubbish pits. The tunnels are designed to ensure good ventilation and provide the shortest transport routes. And if that is not urbanization, if that is not something that we can call the urban, then I don't know what is. But what it certainly is, is incredible design. It is absolutely gorgeous and is a testament to how complex their societies are. Now, these leafcutter ants are not the only ones to build incredible structures. Fire ants are able to build floating rafts using their own bodies. Uh, They're subject to areas in which there's a lot of flooding, and they've figured out how to keep themselves buoyant, putting the queen in the center of the raft. And they can do this for weeks. Not only that, but fire ants can also build towers using their own bodies. So if they need to build up, and they've got a blade of grass or a piece of stick, they can build upwards, uh, making really incredible structures to keep themselves and their queen safe. Army ants are able to build bridges. So if they're trying to get from point A to point B, some of the ants use their bodies to build bridges and the other ants go back and forth over the bridge, collecting food or foraging or doing whatever they need to do. Weaver ants make buildings by stitching together leaves high in trees using silk. And Argentine ants have the biggest ant colony in the world, or as far as we know so far, that stretches at least 3,000 miles across Europe. Now, these ants are super, super interesting. In fact, they don't make one massive colony or one huge colony like other ants do. What they do is they make really small colonies that are roughly 120 ants per colony. So they have numerous queens, each queen with about 120 individuals, 
But if they are genetically similar to one another, they don't fight. There are no big battles that are going on. And they actually collaborate and communicate across colonies. So this is why they've got one of the biggest networks or colonies in the world. And they started out in Argentina, um, hitched some rides on ships, and have now made themselves quite abundant across North America and Europe as well. Ants are not only incredible for their great design and structures that they're able to build, but they have pretty interesting social skills as well. So most of the ants that you see are females. Males tend to stay within the nest and only stick around for reproduction. And they come from unfertilized eggs. So all the other eggs are fertilized and become females. And they're given a variety of different roles and responsibilities within the nest themselves. These ants interact as individuals through touch, sound, and chemical signals. Ants have really poor eyesight, but by touching other ants that have gone out to forage food, they're able to get a sense of where that ant has gone, and then they change their route accordingly. So if there's nothing in the direction that that ant has gone, they don't go that way, and they figure out a new, what seems almost random, but is not random at all, route to find different food. And when the ant has found food, they head back to they head back to their nest or back to their colony, leaving a scent trail. And when they encounter another individual ant, they touch each other. That ant picks up on the signal and says, okay, I know where the food is and heads over. And then so it continues. Every time an ant meets another ant, they pass on the signal. And so the ants go and get food and come back until eventually someone meets an ant and they've dropped that signal because the food is gone. So I find that really rather remarkable. And in fact, this kind of what seems to be random but simple communication patterns are starting to be picked up by humans that are creating AI and computer design as a way of trying to figure out a really efficient and effective way of covering broad areas spatially. It seems as though ants are not only an inspiration when it comes to creating great design, but they're really an inspiration when it comes to thinking through how to move in space and how to work collaboratively. So that's all I have for today's animal highlight. It's been really fun watching these videos and getting to know ants a little bit better. I hope that you learned something new. And that's it for episode nine. Thank you to Animals and Philosophy, Politics, Law and Ethics for sponsoring the Animal Turn podcast where these highlights were taken from. And another massive thank you to Christian Mentz for editing this episode. Thank you also goes to Rebecca Shen for designing the Animal Highlight logo and episode artwork. This is the Animal Highlight with me, Claudia Hurtenfelder.